We return to the Game of Thrones. Well, maybe today we'll actually get some gameplay and welcome back to the adventures of Lord John of the Westeros Restoration. There was a couple of things people point out in the comments. Number one, uh, probably best not to convert seeing as we, I mean, on the, on the sort of meta game side of things, we did do a Relore run fairly recently in the Game of Thrones mod. Um, plus, it's also pointing out that, you know, he, he was raised a Northman in the in the books. He's actually a Warg, which I completely forgot about, uh, which is exclusively sort of an old god's power. And he's kind of a traditionalist, isn't he, Jon Snow? He's very much about um, holding up tradition. He's very much about... Uh, sort of doing what he was taught, and he was taught to be a proper Northman, as as sort of uh, represented in the show with his 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 following code. You know, when he beheads uh, Janos Slint, and was it Janos Slint? I don't remember. Um, but when, when he actually follows the Night Watch down to a T, and you know, the whole he who passes a sentence must swing the sword crap. So he's very much a man of tradition. So I feel like converting him over from the old gods to Relaw, even though he was resurrected, he obviously never asked for it, never really cared about it after the fact. Doesn't really, I don't know, it seems to be fairly indifferent to the whole thing in the show. That might be because the show's got some bad writing sometimes. Daenerys, though, might convert. There's a pretty strong case for that. I mean, she's never even been to Westeros. Or she has, I suppose, by this point. Um, but she went to Westeros, and then they lost and left again. So why the hell she'd follow Westeros? He got seeing as she was raised in Essos all her life, and then lived the rest of it sort of traveling across the Far East here. Doesn't really make much sense that she would follow the, the Westerosi gods. So if that if she happens to convert, not going to complain. The one thing I will take contention with is people thought that why would, why would John give a rat's ass about foot reforming like Andalos? The point is, Daenerys is very big on titles, if you haven't noticed by the show or the books referring to herself as Queen Daenerys of just about every bloody thing under the sun. So, the point is, she's, she's Queen of the Andals. And to legitimise that, I think taking control of the original Andal province would give her a little bit of legitimacy. Plus, there are Andals there. Uh, so, as the Queen of the Andals in the First Men, it's kind of her right, isn't it? Um, plus, I also kind of like that as a, as a story thing, because Andalos, I believe, doesn't only uh, only exist in the original bookmark. So we kind of fun to form our own little kingdom in Essos as well, sort of carve our own way before we uh, head off into the other lands. But, you know, Jon Snow is an honourable man. He's not going to take lands from Illyrio Mapatis, the man who, who saved his life, the man who basically raised Daenerys, the man who gave them the land in the first place. I feel like it would be an absolute slap in the face to uh, steal land from the man that gave you exile. So maybe we won't be doing that. Uh, with this guy. Maybe they'll have some ambitious son or something in the future. Now, the other thing I have checked as well. What? That cruel jester Ramsay Bolton has left the earth. Oh, because John and Ramsay Bolton were rivals. Well, now that he's dead, he wants to find himself a new enemy. Dick. Dick Yellow. <laughs> I can't. You feel relief over the death of Ramsay. That's not really Jon Snow, is it? To be like, haha, I'll find myself a new enemy. No, he would, he would, he would, this sounds exactly like something Jon Snow would say. Ramsay's taken enough of my time and energy, no more. Oh, wow. Okay, so, uh, apparently we're at war with the White Walkers. The entire world is at war with the White Walkers. The Jogos Nahai, we've got, obviously, Illyrio of Pentos there. We've got Summer Islanders. We've got Leng, of course, the islands south of Yee Sea. Everybody is fighting the White Walkers because they are that much of a threat. What is this? Oh, this invasion of the Iron Islands. Have they found a way to cross the sea? I didn't think they could actually cross the sea. Um, based on nothing really besides what they said in the show. My friend, Tormund, has expressed a desire to get married. He's asked my permission to find a suitable spouse. I mean, we all know who he wants to marry. Let's be reasonable here. Fine. I have for you the finest of, of, finest of brides, if I can find her. Um... She's just somewhere, right? Hang on. Uh, Brienne. Wait, what? Can you not marry Brienne? I will find you someone nice. Wait, Brienne of Tarth. Why can't she marry? Uh, she is definitely allowed. Oh, because she's a noble woman, isn't she? Um, so we need to go matrimonial marriage. Tormund. He's up for that. Of course he is. He doesn't care about houses or titles. He just wants the beautiful Brienne, who's celibate. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, well, I guess that's. Uh, I guess that's the end of that. He's gonna hate us from now on. That's nice. That's my head cannon. Tormund and, Tormund and Brienne, you know, they've been alluding it for quite some while. Let's, let's let him have that in his retirement. My dear friend, I wish to give you the honour of sending my children Lucia to you in Velvet Peak, making her your ward. I can think of none better to teach her. Look, this is why we can't turn against Illyrio. The guy likes us. He's our, he thinks that we're his friend. He wants us to train his daughter. And, and obviously, of course, in, in sort of medieval times and obviously in the Game of Thrones, while well, sending someone your ward wasn't as much... Uh, was was almost as, as much as a sign of respect as it was sending them as a prisoner to ensure peace. But uh, this time around, I have a feel like he just wants us to educate because we're, we're a good character, you know? Diligent, authoritative, brave, just honourable. He would be a good teacher, I think. Let's give him a bit more of a Jon Snow beard. Um, 
Or any of these? That's a bit more John Snowy, right? I feel like that looks a little bit better than the other one. Last one looked a little bit kind of like he might drive a little bit slow around schools. Okay, open council positions. Uh, Jamie Lannister wants to get married. Do we even have anyone else? I'll find him someone nice. Um, Sansa or Arya wouldn't be a bad call. Jamie marries Sansa. House Lannister and House Stark. That seems like a good idea. That seems like a very good idea. You're welcome, my friend. Um, apparently he dislikes it. Oh, because we're in a blood feud. Shit, yeah. Uh, is that still going on, huh? Because we're not really trustworthy of one another. Daenerys apparently... Well, Daenerys is doing something, judging by the screaming and the fire. Uh, what, are you, what is she doing? Fed to Daenerys' Targaryen dragon? What are you up to? Nothing, apparently. She's just feeding people to it. She's just flying around eating people, huh? Just specifically a bunch of Dothra... What? She, she's gone on her own little adventure here, because she's ended up with a bloody... Every... Everything. Daenerys' crown, Stannis' crown, glass candle... Stannis' crown? Drogon's whip. Okay, that's fine. Dragonbone necklace, dragonbone bracelets. What is happening here? Original owner, Cleon the Butcher King. His dar's though. Okay, so that's his dar. That's acceptable. My god. You know what? Let's leave it to her. I love that she's actually going off and doing her own adventures. That's really cool. I, didn't, I don't know what she's up to, but that's fine. I've grown increasingly attached to Daenerys, and the thought of our marriage was merely a practical arrangement. I wonder if I've come to love her. It's a marriage of love. Daenerys falls in love with Lord Jon. Seems appropriate. Again, 20% fertility. But all the other girls. Jon Snow, of course. Absolute player. Shouldn't concern myself with such trifles. Yeah, Daenerys is a trifle. Well, I mean, we're going to go for this one, right? This is a marriage of love. I mean, that was basically what's established in the show, right? When, you know, remember when they were in the Coliseum and Jon was like, perhaps she wasn't the most trustworthy source of information. Wink. And then Daenerys was all about it. So that's basically what we've just done right there. A rumor about a spy sneaking around in my own castle has confirmed when I caught him red-handed. Um... I don't think John would care. Actually, no, John would possibly behead him, wouldn't he? You know, he who passes a sweat sentence, swings the sword, absolutely chop his head off. We're going to roleplay this a little bit, at least for the first couple of characters, until we introduce our own characters to the mix. The dragon Drogon is a ravenous beast who regularly roams the lands of Velvet Peak, gorging on the livestock of the small folk. Hundreds of them have seeked audience with you in the past month to protest this. I mean, what can we say? We can offer them vague promises and apologies. Sir Davos is on it. Thank you, Sir Davos. Much appreciated. He's keeping the peasants calm. And Illyrium of Partis wants to make John his commander. Take the fight to the White Walkers. In fact, the whole world versus the White Walkers. 8% war score. Doing a pretty good job. I have a feeling the whole world is probably going to win this. Bearing in mind that, uh, that there is a lot of them. There's way more of them. Just in the amount of armies they've got. The amount of boats they've got. The amount of separate different units they're going to have. The White Walkers just aren't going to be able to keep up with it. Quite simply. They just don't. They could not physically split their armies small enough. To fight off all of these other... And look at these boats just pouring up the narrow sea. This is absolutely nuts, the amount of people. We've got boats coming from all the way from Valyria. We've got boats coming from Karth, from Lang, obviously. This is cool. There is a man I need to arrest another I want to assassinate. I don't think Jon Snow would want to assassinate anyone. I think you're lying to me. Uh, Varys. We're going to send Varys to the arrest. I feel like Varys would be able to pull up some information on people so that we have a high chance of arresting them. That seems... He, I think he would start setting up his little birds. Oh, let's be honest. He'd already have little birds in Pentos. Who should be our Tyrion? Why is Tyrion not our uh, Hand of the King? He's left? Wait, that's Jorah. <laughs> I was going to say, hang on a minute. Uh, Tyrion Lannister. He's gone to live with the High Septum. Wait, what? They're in King's Landing with the High... S They've gone to go and defend, what, the, the High Septum? The Faith? 253 people in court. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay, well, fuck you too, Tyrion, you traitor. I guess he was only in it for, like, the whole Hand of the King Daenerys thing. Oh, he's excommunicated? Maybe that disinherited. I mean, he's clearly on another adventure. I guess the life in Pentos, he probably did some pompous speech about how he didn't want to travel halfway across the world and how he has to take the fight to them and it's his duty and whatnot. Yeah, whatever. Get out of here. I'm not interested in you anyway, Tyrion Lannister. Okay, who should we put in charge? Um, Samhain Tarth, that's Brienne's father and previous Lord of, uh, Lord of Tarth, funnily enough. He's not bad. I feel like he's not very good either. I feel like we could probably just hire someone new. Let's go and see who we've got on our list of people to hire here. Um, you know what? We could invite almost anybody from Westeros to our court, I assume. Um, let's go join court. Yes. And let's sort by stewardship. Um, we've got a Cranagman, a Northman, Arion, Arion Marsh, a, a North House. Welcome aboard. Um, is there anyone else we recognize here? Stone, Dornish, Balloon, we've got Holt. I don't recognize any of these houses. Well, sort of minor houses, that's all. There's no one... Oh, there's a House Aaron there. Oh, Har House Aaron of Goldtown. That's a that's a cadet house. Don't worry about that one. Um, yeah, no one really worth worrying about. We've got House Kaltigar. So House Kaltigar was another one of the Targaryen... Oh, sorry, the Valyrian houses that fled 
uh, Valyria with House Targaryen originally. Um, kind of surprised they're still kicking around. They've got an axe called the Crab's Pincer. Anyway, we won't worry too much about that. The, the Noble Houses, like I said, have all just spread out through the world. Welcome, my good friend, Arion Marsh, a Cranagman, which are uh, kind of like Northerners, but they live in the Neck. They're basically swamp men, right? Um, okay, let's put you in charge, because you are very, very good. And let's have you collect some taxes. Um, oh, Samuel Tali. Oh, shit, we just made him Hand of the King. Should probably sack Samuel Tali instead. Can we make Daenerys Lord Treasurer? I feel like you're not that... I mean, you're good and all, but... Oh, shit, I didn't mean to do that. No, Samuel, come back, please. Just, uh, Samuel, you've got to leave. It's Daenerys' turn. Actually, no, you know what, Daenerys, instead. Bros for whole hose. It's Samuel Tali, after all. Morale of armies or levy sides. I guess it doesn't really matter. We can't really do much right now whilst this war against... To defend the Iron Islands is going on. Um, my beloved half-brother, Brandon, is concerned that he's not married. Brandon Stark. So a lot of people were not happy about my idea of giving Tormund the North. They also give it to Bran instead, which I suppose is Stark. There always has to be a Stark in Winterfell, right? That's how, that's how it goes. We should be able to find him a very good marriage. So let's take a look through some of these houses here. Uh, you've got House Dondarrion, which are quite a powerful house. House Dane, she's also very good. She's appealing and a brilliant steward. Um, house Dane, of course, Dornish, Dornishman. Uh, Salt Dornish, I believe is what it's called. Um, obviously, Aaron of Goldtown, not really relevant. We've got Royce there. L Lannit, I thought I said Lannister then for a second. Yeah, you know what? I think we'll go for that one we saw before. There we go for the appealing. What was it? An appe appealing... Where was she? Dane? Was it Dane? Yeah. Alice Dane. You'll do. Uh, she's taking refuge with the High Septum in King's Landing somewhere. I guess there's some sort of underground network in King's Landing. They're all hiding in the sewers or something from the uh, from the Night King there. To the diligent Lord John. May you live in harmony and contentment. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's a good marriage. House Dane. Very noble. Very powerful. Very ancient house living in Dawn. Uh, Marrying to House Start there. That seems pretty good. Speaking of which, Jamie Lannister is dead. <laughs> Murdered on the orders of Daenerys Targaryen. Daenerys. Is that the end of House Lannister? Tyrion is still around. Tyrion, would you like to marry Sansa? They were married in the show. Let's go for round two. Uh, his golden hand has been removed. His widow's... What happens to his sword? Well, what happened to Widow's Whale? I accept your suggestion. Excellent. High Septimus declared an anathema upon your wife, Princess Daenerys Targaryen, for her sins. She has, she has had Jaime Lannister assassinated and now she's been excommunicated. I mean, I feel like the Faith of the Seven probably not too relevant these days, huh? What happened to Widow's Whale? Well? Come on, Jamie, Jamie Lannister's sword. There it is. A gilded long sword originally wielded by Jamie Lannister. Oh, we got his golden set of armor. Well, that's incredible. Personal combat skill plus 10. Surely gold wouldn't make for the best armor. I guess it wouldn't matter. Um, mo po po monthly prestige there, 0 0.25. What about a widow's whale? That's what I want to know. We got Jamie Lannister's sword, but I don't think that's, a, that, that's it, is it? It just says a gilded long sword. Um, would it have gone to Tyrion, perhaps? Okay, let's go Sansa. Tyrion? Yes, it did. So, inheritance is kind of weird. Um, I don't know where the menu is to show it off, but basically, if there's no living family members and they're your vassal, when they die, the sword will go to you at that stage. Can we see the owners of Valyrian Blades? It's zero there we go. Rules of inheritance. Upon the death of an owner of Valyrian Steel Blade, the order of precedence for inheritance is the current heir, a grandchild, child, sibling, any member of the same dynasty, any child slash grandchild. So if you're a woman who married off non-matrilineally and then die, if you don't, any of your living relatives... Uh, as in dynastic relatives, so your brother or your father or your mother will inherit or before your children will, which is actually fairly interesting. Uh, spouse, current heir, liege, or any vassal. So liege comes almost second from last. Sword Dawn is an exception. Only members of House Dane can claim the sword. They have to become the Sword of Mourning. Awesome. Uh, your own creature has a... Oh, man, he has Valyrian steel armor. How are the White Walkers ever going to kill him, then? Because as we know, Valyrian steel armor is the... Or oh, Valyrian steel in the show, especially, is, is shown to be able to kill the White Walkers. Can you just, like, run into them? Just body slam them? <laughs> You're on great joy. Body slams the Night King, and then the series ends. And he was a Zora High all along. He's also got the Horned Dragonbinder, which is a bit worrying. Because Dragonbinder allows you to control dragons without them being tamed. Um, now, in the books, his plan is to use Dragonbinder steel to Daenerys' dragons. Let's hope he hasn't got the same plan here. Fingers crossed. Uh, man, there's a lot of uh, Valyrian still going on right now, huh? Right, we won't worry about that too much. Awesome. We got some armor out of it, though, so that's pretty good. Master Other of the Fist of the First Men has had the titles usurped by Other. <laughs> Who is apparently now... Wait, a vassal of what? Oh, he's just called Other. He's just in the court now of us. This is so strange. I almost don't think the game knows really how to handle this many White Walkers kicking around. Jon Snow is now known as the Just. 
I feel like we're really doing him some justice here. We can't really do much until he comes back from... I guess we go for him learning troops. No, he's still... There we go. All right. So what's the plan then? Um, first things first. Let's actually start getting some gameplay going. Chief General Brienne. Welcome aboard because General Lannister obviously died. All right. I think we start fabricating claims on... Maybe start grabbing parts of Andalos from Lorath Bravos. I think that's probably not too much of a terrible idea. So how would we even fight that? Because Bravos are going to be very, very powerful. We could try and grab some titles. I don't know. Maybe Daenerys is whispering his shoulder like, Hey, John, please get these titles for the love of God. We're, I, I'm the Queen of the Andals and the First Men. Um, I guess we could start fabricating claims. I mean, there's, there's only so much roleplay we can do before it actually starts to make the campaign impossible to play. So why not? We can start building up claims, even if we don't press them. You know, maybe Illyrio will turn a blind eye. Maybe he'll be like, actually, that's fine. You know, you take that because you are a very powerful man with two dragons that I don't particularly want to piss off. A couple of household knights are practicing. The cold-blooded Destro and the warm-blooded Charger amble towards each other. Let me have at it. Because we have the brave trait, we can gain 15 prestige or we can just gain two intrigue. And lose Temple Vassal opinion. Do we really care about the Temple Vassal opinion with the old gods? They've got the lowest moral authority possible. Um, it's available because you have the brave trait. Sure, why the hell not? Intrigue plus two. Well, he's got zero intrigue. How has he got zero intrigue? Honorable, kind, and honest. Okay, fair enough. Oh, God. There we go. That was immediate. So it's actually not going to... Not Illyrio doesn't care about that. Lord Eon. His opinion is, is changed a lot. It's only 25 gold as well. Fine. Let's start building up this new kingdom of Andalos. That could be quite fun. That's nice. It's nice that House Tali is staying alive. A son was born to Selmor Tali and Gilly named Randall. He named it after his abusive father who tried to kill him. Oh, just Samuel Tali things. Classic. Maybe just... I, I imagine Samuel Tali would be like, Oh, it's just a nice name. You know, he'd say something ridiculous like that rather than uh, putting any associations with... They are actually House... Oh, House Gardener. They are descendants of House Gardener. Almost everybody in the Bloody Rich is a descendant of House Gardener, though. Nice. Okay. So, I was actually going to bring that up. Why don't we decide what house gets what as we... Or, you know, if we ever get to that stage, God forbid. What house gets what. And as I was thinking that, I remembered there was one character I forgot about. There's one character in the last series that we were introduced to, and that was Gendry, or as he's called in the books, Edric, Edric Storm. Uh, he's currently down in uh, in Lisa, apparently making a, making a name for himself, being a blacksmith or whatever. Can we invite him up? No, higher tier. Oh, because he's serving a king. Oh, man, we can't bring him over. Um, his mother, Delina Florent, is alive, and obviously Robert Baratheon died under suspicious circumstances many years ago now. Many, many years, four years ago. Is that really all the time that's passed? That doesn't seem right. Um, man, it's a real shame we can't invite him to court, because he's like... What if we send him a gift and then invite him? No, still higher tier. But it's not as low, though. Could buy a favor from him at some stage, seeing as he's not related to any rulers. But I was thinking we could legitimize him and bring back Hel House Baratheon with, with Robert Baratheon's son on the uh, on the throne of the Stormlands. Then, of course, we've got House Seaworth as well, which I feel like deserves something good, huh? Um, House Tarly's still alive. So we're sort of being a sort of preserver of some of these... Uh, some of these Westerosi houses, which are otherwise going to go completely extinct without our intervention. All right. Seat of advisor. Illyria wants Jon Snow to advise him. Of course, absolutely. What, a, what an honor. Thank you. Lord Jon, I regret to inform you that decided to remove you on your position from your council. Oh, never mind then. Well, I guess he was sick of our advice. Jon Snow turned up, looked broody in the corner, and then Illyria asked him to leave. Classic. Now, we also have next to us the ruins of... Uh, oh, in fact, the ruin. Uh, the ruins of the Rhaenar. So this is, or the, the Roynar, sorry, everybody gets annoyed when I say that. The Roynar, which are essentially where the, where the Dornish people came from, right? Now, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, is this one not the cursed... This might be the cursed province where the lot of, a lot of the stone men live. So in, in the, the TV show, the stone men live in, in Valyria, but in the books they live... They're sent upriver from Volantis to, uh, to somewhere around here, but I'm actually not sure. It might be somewhere a bit further down here, or it might be this one in particular... Um, right, so what have we got? We've got Ruin Trade Route, Asasi Trade Route, Ruin Province. We could colonize it. Like, it's right next to us. We could just grab that one up. Now, it counts as the Velvet Hills, which is our duchy here. Um, even though we want Andalos, we might as well try and grab as much land as possible. We could always try and colonize the Roinar as well. Bear in mind, you know, Daenerys, once again, Queen of the Andals and the Roinar. What are you? Iron King Norn of the Iron Isles? G Norn Good Brother. Wait, what happened to Joran Greyjoy? Did he die? Iron Isles, history. He's dead. Euron Greyjoy died of scurvy. Yar har diddly dee. It was a pirate's life for him after all. Man, dying of scurvy sucks. Who inherited all his stuff? 
Because he has some really, really nice stuff. I, like, you know, a, a horn that can control any dragon that's now owned by a man with a horn in his picture. So he definitely knows how to use it. Uh, the man of a hundred ships. Uh, there it is. There's a dragon miner. What happened to the Valyrian steel armor? Was he buried with it? Man, I'd really, really like that. Just for safekeeping, to be honest with you. We don't need to control the dragons. We've already got the dragons. But just having that would be very useful so that we know no one can, can steal the dragons. So we won against the White Walkers, which is good news. I can't imagine they're particularly good at, you know, sailing or anything like that. So we've got 61,000 men and control the whole of the Blackfish's armor. The distinctive armor of Brynden Tully, a suit of black scales adorned by a black trout on the chest. I saw a comment on yesterday's episode saying that uh, Brynden Tully was in the court of the White Walkers. I don't know how he managed to convince them, but he's, he's died in the meantime. And we've got Elwood Rothermont, um, some sort of septum. Oh, he's the septum, of course, serving the court of the White Walkers. Obviously, all good courts need a septum. What the fuck is happening? Fate smiles upon me. My wife Daenerys is pregnant. Now, those of you with eagle eyes will know that's not the only thing that's popped up. Sansa Stark has arrived in your court. Yeah, the same Sansa Stark that we arranged to marry to House Lannister via Tyrion, and then, well, via Jaime first, then via Tyrion. Um, why is she not married to Tyrion, you wonder? I wonder that too. So let's take a look here and find out what the hell's happened. He has... decided to become a fake... <laughs> He's decided to uh, become a member of the Faith of the Seven. Wow, what a character arc for Tyrion. He goes from from drunkard and and whoremonger to you know noble lord who leads the charge in the in the Battle of Blackwater to to advisor to Daenerys Targaryen, and then when everything goes horribly wrong, he becomes a man of the cloth. He's joined the church and has actually become a fucking septum. Are you kidding me? What the hell? So he's now just working for the High Septum? So House Lannister is just going to go extinct. Oh, there's 25 11 members. Okay, ignore me. Um, got Lancel Lannister. There's apparently something horribly wrong with him. I thought he was dead, but there we go. Um, Scarred. Celibate. Okay, well, that's still going to be the end of House Lannister. Okay, well, let's not worry about it too much then. Um, I guess we should marry Sansa off to somebody matrilineally in that case. Try and keep House Stark kicking around. We've got Brandon obviously married off. We want to make sure that they are, they are carrying on here. What about someone who's... Wait, what about the Hound? I mean, there's a lot of fanfic about this, so you know what, we're going to do it. Uh, matrilineally married the Hound. She likes the Hound, you know. She's she, he's, he's saved her a lot of times, you know. Uh, he, he protected her from Joffrey, gave her a little handkerchief or whatever when he when Joffrey used to beat her. I think, I think you know, there could be something there. There's not. It's, it's a terrible matchup. Dear John the Just, I hereby invite you to the Grand Feast of Pentos. Your presence at the feast will be greatly appreciated. Coming from the man that fired us. <sighs> Fine, okay. Because we're good friends with Illyria, I'm going to do this. He did, he did fire us after we started fabricating plots, so there, there is that as well. We arrived in Pentos, where Magister Illyria has greeted us warmly to his feast. Bread, salt, and the fine jade sea wine has been served as his guest right. Thank you. Thank you for having us. As his sovereign of the city of Prince Tarina's ceremonial duty to preside over all feasts and balls, and we'll do so at Magister Illyria's feast, because he is the Prince of Pentos, basically the guy who's next in line. Um, so I think that's how it works, or is it just like a title like Caesar? Um, Lord Master, okay, so the expected successor is neither his son or this guy. Oh, no, no, the, pr the prince is the, the feudal lord. So it's obviously a free city. They're, they're, they're traders. They're, it's a merchant republic in the base game, essentially. Um, this guy is like a, a feudal lord. He has the prince's palace or something like that? Yeah, there we go, the prince's palace. Magister Illyrio, the feast is over. Thank you. Okay, well, let's go home. Will there be a feast next year? What is this? He wishes to make a journey to Master Egon. Oh, no, but he's so good, though. Make a journey to the Citadel and Harlow Hill so that you may study the link and increase his knowledge. He'll be gone for several months. Well, let's hope we don't get ill in the meantime. I didn't realize he was coming back. I thought that was the event where they asked to go and serve on the Council of uh, of the Maesters. Oh, God, we're at war with uh, Second Invasion of the Iron Isles. They really weren't messing around, huh? They're still at the others versus the whole world. It's nice to know that they've got our back on that one, even though we're not really doing too much to harm them. We're actually losing this war. A son was born to Lord John the Just and Princess Daenerys Stormborn named Krasanis. There we go, Krasanis Targaryen. A lot of you are asking why he's matrilineally married to Daenerys. Well, he's a bastard, so he doesn't have a choice. Uh, unfortunately, it's just the way the Game of Thrones world works. He has the, the wife always takes on the the coat of arms of the house of the of of the the male, right? And he can't because he doesn't have a coat of arms. He's just a snow. So unless we discover his lineage. All the kids are going to be born in Daenerys' dynasty. It won't give us a game over or anything because I've I've implemented some things to prevent that because it is a legitimate son. And we we know as the audience that 
Jon Snow is a Targaryen anyway, so it really makes no difference. Um, but, you know, just for Jon's story, I feel like uncovering his lineage might also affect things. And there was a comment last episode that I thought was cool. You can apparently make the house of, of... They called it Stark Garion. I don't know if that's the official name, but basically a combination of House Stark and House Targaryen. You can take on the coat of arms. Oh, basically what this flag is, right? I used it because it um, basically reflected John and Daenerys there. But that is going to be his coat of arms if we find a way to do it. I actually have no idea how you do it. I don't, I'm not even sure if it's possible when Westeros is entirely controlled by the White Walkers. So we're worth looking into that. Right, okay. Uh, let's go for Have Five Children. I think that's appropriate. What was his name? Krasanis Targaryen. That's terrible. Oh, God, I, we can't rename him because he's of the Mother's Dynasty. Surely, like, <laughs> grandparents, Eddard Stark and Eris the Mad. That's so strange. Um, I was going to say, surely, like, you know, I mean, Ray Rhaegon? Rhaegar? Rhaegar would have been more appropriate? Rhaegon's a dragon, right? Rhaegar is the dragon. Rhaegar would have been way more appropriate. Daenerys' brother and Jon's father, given that the, ki the kid, that, that name would have been a lot better, but uh, a bit late for that now. So because he's a member of House Targaryen as well, he automatically gains claims on Dragonstone and King's Landing. So what are we going to train him in? It's the real option. Is it too early for go to a um, uh, martial build? Are we going to be in that many wars to, to need to go for, like, struggle, for example? Um, probably going to go with duty or thrift, just because, again, they are pretty much the best ones here. He's got appealing, which is fine. I believe Daenerys is also quick, isn't she? Yeah, astute. Because plus three to everything, that's basically quick. Um, duty or thrift? I think we're going to go with thrift, just for the curious chance of getting shrewd, as always. Uh, and then I guess who's the best guardian for him? It's going to be Jon Snow, isn't it? Obviously, we're going to get Jon Snow to educate him there. Jon Snow is a good educator. And I feel like, as, as far as a role model goes, this guy's got just about everything going for him. Honestly, it's not fantastic, but the diplomacy is nice. Kind, diligent, authoritative, brave, just like honorable. Everything is uh, is pretty ideal. Nice. Oh, he's back. Cool. I spent many months at the Citadel and earning a steel link for his chain. He's finally arrived back at Velvet Peak. What does that do for him, getting a link on his chain? Um, he's got. Oh, this is awesome. I didn't know they'd done this. So he's got the red gold link. Um, earning links allows a character to upgrade their learning and education level trait. Earning two links in a subject allows a master to, to select it as a specialization. Oh, wow. Um, so they have... So, so the red gold link is law. Steel link is metallurgy. Silver link is medicine. Obviously, I'm not going to go through all of them. He's got, like, a lot of silver links, apparently. Um, I guess that's why he's a renowned position. Uh, what's a platinum link? That sounds impressive. Um, enough knowledge of language. Okay, cool. He's got a couple of those as well. So there are... What's black iron? Ravenry. Oh, so looking up... Right, okay, sure. Now, there is also a Valyrian Steel Link, which I believe uh, signifies them knowing a lot about magic. So that one, I assume, is fairly rare. Now, what about societies? We can't join any still, huh? What do you need to join the Citadel? Because that sounds kind of cool. Uh, you need to be... You need to have a learning of eight. Okay, Jon Snow is actually too stupid to join them. That's understandable. All the following must be true. We have to be a scholar, astronomer, cartographer, travelist, linguist, erudite, mystic, or lunatic. Any of those would do. Um, besides that, he could actually join if he was a little bit smarter. We could send him on a world tour. He's actually only one point off. We could send him on a foreign tour and go and, go and sort of make some allies across the world. That'd be kind of cool. And to be fair, we don't need actually much more cash for that. So we might as well let that tick through. And then go on a foreign tour with Jon Snow and actually see what we can find out there in the world. Be free, John. Trust your people to look after it. Now, look, he's got some really great people looking after it. He's got Daenerys. He's got Davos. He's got Varys. He's got Samuel Tarly, the, the man himself, the genius. Where do you want to go on the tour? Uh, I shall tour the feudal lands of Westeros. Give me a no from me, Chief. I feel like that's a horrible idea. Um, many cultures of the Jade Sea. The wonders made by man. That's a long tour. It costs 100 gold as well. Might as well go for the longest tour we can, huh? Um, Jade Sea is probably not bad. We go visit Top Box Boff. Let's do it. Let's go and see Topbog, the king of Ashai. Uh, historically, uh, a very classic king there. You can go and look that up on the Game of Thrones wiki. How long do you wish your tours to be? We might as well spend as much money as possible, because huh? you only get to go on these once per character. Why not? We're going to put the ram in debt so he can go off on a nice journey and hopefully come out with some knowledge. He's going to go and try and discover the secrets to defeating these white walkers, as they've already failed once before. Go all the way to Ashai. They've got a lot of secrets there. I feel like they, might, they would know how to beat the White Walkers, right? They've done it before, at least in the expanded expanded law. All right, Daenerys is our regent. She is now in charge, and famously, Daenerys is a. Are we dead? <laughs> During your journey across the seas, your ship was hit by a terrible storm. The ship is violently rocking back and forth as you try to cling on to anything to keep steady, whilst your men try to keep the ship on course and, more importantly, in one piece. Oh, the gods! No. 10% chance of dying. You shitting me. That is a relief. Because, my God, that would have been the end of the series right there. Obviously, we have a son, but I don't particularly want to play as a, a zero-year-old boy. The men have managed to get the ship safely under control, and you continue on your way. Well, that was um, 
I hope that doesn't happen very frequently. Uh, thank you. Brienne has trained her father how to be a commander. That uh, seems a, bit, a little strange, but okay, I will leave you. I love that, uh, I love that all of our courtiers are almost exclusively the people we bought with us from, from, uh, Westeros, obviously. We've got a couple here and there that I don't actually recognise, but for the most part, all of them are just, you know, Jon Snow's band of merry men, as I said, uh, that he sort of gathered in the, in the past few series of the show. My wife doesn't seem very content at the moment. She wants more clothes, better shoes, and fine dresses. 25% chance of getting the trade at Lustful. You know what? For the goodness of House Stark and House Targaryen, done. Shit. Well, it just costs us money. We got nothing out of it. That sucks. Wait, what? Oh, shit. She fired Varys. Oh, don't, don't do this. Hang on. Um... Oh my god, now we haven't got anybody who's good for the task. Fine, Alice Dane, please take over. Daenerys, what the hell are you doing? After many days at sea, you finally arrive at Carth. You're very excited and cannot wait to explore the new lands and Carthian culture. We're going to see the Warlocks to see if they know anything about killing strange ice zombies. As I wandered through the streets, I overheard some local traders talking with each other about setting up a local trade route. Maybe I should negotiate some good deals for Dragonglass. Nothing. They wouldn't know a good deal if it hit them in the face. He fucked up. Lose some prestige. Well, we've got enough prestige to lose. It's better that than gold or piety at this stage, let's be honest. Carth. The captain sails the ship through the jade gates into Carth and docking one of the covered wharfs. You don't want to go in there, he smiles, but if you follow me, you'll see to the ceremonies for you for meeting with the pureborn. We went to see the warlocks, and now we're off somewhere better. And we did some charity work. Good. I'm, gl I'm glad we've got the money for charity work. Right, almost to Pharos to see the, the stone cow? Stone goat? I don't remember their god. Um, maybe their stone gods, though, will help us against the White Walkers. As you are quietly having a drink in a local tavern, some of the other men there repeatedly make japes about how you look and the clothes you wear. Clearly in their drunken stupor, they do not understand that you're a foreigner in their land, as opposed to being someone they believe to be slightly deformed. Wow. As the japes get more and more vulgar, they start to threaten. It's like a YouTube comment section. Just harmless fun, eh, lads? Huh? Oi, just a bit of harmless fun. Buys me a drink. Good. I can finally finish this drink. Pharos. Excellent. Bewildered, you head into Forest Wall to greet Shan Halil Farood. What an interesting place. Let's go to Yin. So this is uh, this is in Yeet, isn't it? I believe this is the capital of Yeet. We are going to explore Yeetish culture. The Azure Emperor Bubai of Yeet. Whilst in Yin, I met a lovely woman called Chi, a courtier of the Azure Emperor Bubai. We both got along very well over the night of drinking. There is a clear mutual attraction here. She'll ask her into my quarters. Or we shall say, I think not. I don't think John is the type of guy that would do that. He turned down Melisandre in the last series, so I'm, I'm pretty sure he could turn down her. Yin. The ship sails from the Jade Sea into Yin Harbor. Is this official artwork? <laughs> That's going to be a no from me. How marvelous. So, the Azure Emperor, uh, one of the original Emperor, the Blackstone Emperor, worshipper of the Blackstone. Some links to the uh, to the sort of craziest stuff we saw in the Top Box stuff, Spoff campaign. Maybe even a relation to the White Walkers as well there. So this is all so good knowledge for the for the battles to come. Daenerys is pregnant. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's been on this tour for the last year. So let's not question that. She hasn't got any lovers, has she? You haven't, you haven't... Okay, well, it's fine. I guess it's okay then. We are arriving in Ashai. So this is a big one. Shadow Chancellor Yatum Adieu will be informed of your arrival. Hello. She hasn't got Empress of Lang. I don't care about you. Here we are. You're not top box spot. What the hell is this? Teach us some shadow magic. We need to. We need it to defeat the zombies. Despite a bright morning sun, a shadow remains partly cloaked on the ca as the captain marvels. <laughs> can't speak today. The captain maneuvers into the ash. As you disembark, the light seems to disappear into veil and the stones of the city itself. You don't see fish vendors and many shops. What? You don't see fish vendors. Is that is that something to take note? I'm going to think about that whenever I visit anywhere now. Excuse me. There doesn't seem to be many fish vendors around here. My liege, my work in East Andalus seems to have come to fruition. Sir Davos has managed to convince these people that we are their rightful king. The ruler, no, but the peasantry, yes. That's good news. We are the rightful lord of the first men and the, and the Andals and all that nonsense. All right, so the five forts. So the five forts were built to repel, in a sort of a theory, the initial, not my theory, it's, it's a common theory, the initial White Walker invasion that originally came from the very, very far east to cross through the Grey Waste. There's, a, there's an even bigger theory that... Um, this is basically the whole globe, and this part of the world connects up to this part of the world, right? Or it's, a, it's a, like a weird protection of the globe. And uh, that's, that's kind of cool. I do, I do buy into that personally, because it does make a lot of sense. There's a lot of parallels in the series. All right. We've received word from R Rinloss that negotiations have been taking place between Mir and Rinloss. Rinloss is to be annexed. Oh, okay. Um, okay, that's great news. Thank you for letting me know. Who is this man, and why is he so horrifying? Headache? My God, if I look like the... <laughs> Who looks like that with a headache? You look like you haven't slept in about four months. Plot is revealed. 
Oh, we should probably turn on auto stop plots while we're away, otherwise Daenerys is going to get herself killed by sacking just about everybody useful. Now she's got rid of Varys as well. Oh, the most skilled intrigue master in the land. As your Emperor Boo Bai Boo shall be informed of your arrival. Oh, we're going back, are we? Um, we've got an offer of a fighter. Juwan. No, we're okay, thank you, unless you've got something capable of uh, taking out the, uh, the ice zombies. After a few weeks of travel through the Yeetish lands, you see the high peak of the Morns come over the horizon, then a massive black stone walls of the Five Forts. Does it say anything about it? it actually doesn't mention the, uh, the White Walks or the, or the Wolf of the Dawn or anything like that. Now's your best chance to see the top of the fort. Your eyes brighten at the offer and you easily accept. Your stomach flutters as you look out at the grey waste below. What an interesting place. My god, it's still going. Almost to the Leviathan sound. Do we want to... Oh, so ba Varys has been a leal and able servant. We can give Varys. We can make him noble. Not that it's relevant, seeing as he's a eunuch, so, I mean, it's not exactly going to last much longer, huh? Well, we can give him a castle. I think we'll make him... Oh, there he is. Wait, why have we got so much money? Someone must have died. So, Varys Rogare, or, or Roger, but spelt wrong. I like the idea of him being called Varys Roger. That's incredible. <laughs> oh, I can't customize it. Shit. Um, you have to be the top leisure of all its members. I mean, we are, but ignore that one. Okay. Uh, maybe it's because we're away. That's probably more likely. Um, you are definitely getting renamed to Varys Roger when we get home. The most, the most elusive and mysterious man in the whole show. Now, this is cool. During your travels through the Leviathan th Sound, so we're going to see the uh, the Jogos Nai. You, there is a smith who offers to make you a sword or set of armor. Jogos Nai made sword would be amazing, or I wish for a strong set of armor. Now, we have armor and a sword. We have a Valyrian steel sword and armor, so I'm going to say no thanks to both, because neither are going to be as good, are they? There we are. They're, they're the Jogos Nai. They ride Zorses, which are zebras crossed with horses. That's true in real life as well. Let's go to Halashir. I don't know where Halashir is, to be honest with you. I sort of look, my geography goes all over the place. So we started in Pentos. We went to Karth, which is here. We went to Lang, and then Yiti, which is here, obviously. Back to Ashai. The five forts are across here. So we went to this area. Uh, then we went up to the. Up to. What were they called? Jogos Nai, which is basically these people all the way up to the Thousand Isles. The little Viathan sounds. So we were just there. Don't know where we're going now, though. Absolutely no idea. It's turning colder and colder. Oh, don't say that. That's horrible news. Oh, we're going to see another guy in, in Jogos Nai. Okay. 27% chance you succeed. He has failed all three times there, so that's fairly impressive. You should depart for your next destination in a week. Onwards to Ember Nor. Is that on Ibn? Might be. Daenerys has improved. Brienne has been teaching Daenerys the art of swords fighting. She's also married to... Oh, of course, she's married to Tormund. I forgot about that. Um, don't get your hopes up. Oh, she's also celibate. Yeah, no, I think House Tarth might die here. Selwyn has also improved. Brienne's doing a very, very good job, huh? Oh, my God. We're still seeing more Jogos Nahai. Hey, I don't care about this. Throw your hand up some foreign diplomacy. Game 1 diplomacy, though. That's going to help him out a little bit when he's trying to convince people to join his cause. A son was born to John and Daenerys named Daron. That is definitely John's son, let's be honest. Look at look at that. The seed is strong. That's that's the the Stark genes right there. Okay. Um, you're also shit, so we're going to train you in Thrift. Because, again, Thrift is just the best one to go for here. Who wants to train him? Um, I would like John to do it, but obviously he's away. Fine. Daenerys, take over for a while. Ember Noor. Once again, the Jogos Nye. Are we done now? Or are we good? I started missing home. There we go. One afternoon, your wife comes to you and begs you for a private word. Who is this? I was going to say, Daenerys looks a little strange all of a sudden. She asks that you allow her to say one of the serving girls is a handmaiden. She says that she has become very fond of her and believes she would serve well and the two of them get along wonderfully. Sure, we lose some prestige because we're just giving some random minor title woman the title of handmaiden, but that's fine. Some, some random lowborn peasant. Nice. He's on his way home. What a journey. Started missing home. What do we get out of that? Well, for all that gold we spent, we got 250 prestige and a single diplomacy. Did we learn how to beat the White Walkers? No. But you know what? It's about the journey and the friends we made along the way. Thank you all for watching. We're going to leave this episode here for today. It's going to be a slow start while we, uh, while we, you know, start building up the rounds. It's going to be very story heavy, very character heavy. Then hopefully as we start playing as our own sort of characters that, that, uh, take, take over the, from the second generation, that's when we can start driving them ourselves, I think. That's when I'll, I'll throw in a little less, uh, a little less story and a little more creative freedom, I think. So when we, when we take over as Krizanis, just a goddamn awful name. What, what were you thinking, Daenerys? Honestly, that's really just top tier terrible. You know who isn't top tier terrible? That's right, seeing the same top tier level patrons. A big shout out to Harik, Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Banyol, Sedini, Conspire T, Croesus, Escape, Facunda Vasquez, Haydog, Jimbo, Josh Lindeen, Tesla, Michael Mullen, Necrofilm, Pelvis Presley, Sean Thornton, Smirtworm, Tom Terror 18, Vacuous Backus, Wolf Sent, and Sassy7011. Thank you all for your support the Insanity Lovers on Patreon. Thank you for giving the channel monetized, uncensored, and Game of Thrones friendly.
I think that's a good thing. I mean, there are probably a lot of people that disagree in the amount of bloody Game of Thrones we've had on the channel. And a big thank you as well to Gray, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Llewellyn Thomas, Acero, Betamus Max, Chris, Crazy Pack, David Van Diepen, Don, Don Conny Two and Seven, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, J Genzi Zerker, Gen Genji, Genji Zerker. Well, that's hard to say. Hashi Dumar, Hancock, Harry McGowan, Icy the Great, Jay Lehrer, James Barnes, Joran DeVries, John Holiday, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beard, Justin Plot, Nathan Flores, Matthew, Nick, Pantherpel, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, Sir Thor the Swede, Wolfie, Zico, Adam Person, Sidini, Fredrick Brennan, Noah Gallimore, and the Insane Pickle. Thank you all for your support.